Let's go. Let's gamble. It's time to talk the favorites. I brought one of my good friends, a recurring guest to the major report on to talk about it with me. First, let's talk a little fantasy points. This segment is brought to you by the fantasy points media group. Preferred lines is a proud member of that conglomerate of great podcasts and live stream shows. Um, they have a great new PGA content team over there that is putting out quality stuff. You can get 10% off your monthly subscription using the promo code lines 22 Brought to you by Fantasy Points. Thank you to them. Now, without further ado, I can't wait to get to the top of the odds board here for Southern Hills, the 2022 PGA Championship. With me to break it all down, the one, the only, the infamous recurring guest to the major report. Welcome to the show, Jeff Feinberg. What up, man? Happy to be back, Joe. Happy we're through this malaise of post-Masters events and get the summer rolling with the uh, PGA Championship. God, it feels good to have a golf course coming up that's really going to challenge these guys, and we really get them excited about it. We get a great field, possibly the deepest field that we're going to see all year in the majors from top to bottom. And what I've seen the last two years, Jeff, I think the PGA Championship has been the most exciting. When you go back over there to San Francisco, you look at last year, what happened to Kiowa. Kerry Haig and his team have done a great job of setting this thing up year after year, and I'm fired up about it. What about you? Yeah, I mean, especially nothing has helped the PGA even more than the switch, where it sort of wasn't after all the majors that you assume kids hit 10 foot, pretend to hit 10 foot putts on to win, you know, um, so it's kind of lost that stigma, like all the big championships are over, not to knock it, but I'm going to come full circle here, Joe, because I've eaten my words almost since I started doing golf podcasting, the PGA championship um, I think has grown, at least in my opinion, exponentially. I feel like that's a silly thing to say as a major championship, but I just love the courses they continue um, to go to. They're not snobby or beholden to places. Some of them fantastic like the U.S. Open is. They really do um, take us to, to the whole lineup of courses that we've been to in the last handful of years that we're going to, the date change. I've really fallen in love with this championship more so than than I had previously. Yeah, Harding Park, Beth Page, Kiowa Island, they're on a great run. They aren't afraid to go to a Joe Public track and te- and have the best in the world teed up. Ever since they cut that promo with Ric Flair, the PGA yeah. has really stepped their game up. Yeah, that's how, you know, yeah, that's the best. That's that still golf. the best golf intro ever when what TNT TBS formerly had the PGA Championship Quail Quail Hollow. Ironically, I think Jimmy Walker actually binked uh, um, that one, if my memory serves me right. But if you've never seen it, just go YouTube, Ric Flair PGA Championship intro. It'll get you fired up for this week. And it's almost be like a recap of how, um, you know, how far some of those bigger names have fallen since the players faces that I guess would be profiled in that sucker. Yeah. All right. I'm ready. Let's get to this board at the top. This may be the first time in a big field he's really been at the top. I forget where the Masters numbers were. You got Scotty Scheffler at eleven to one, and you got John Rahm at twelve to one. What's like got a take on either one of those two guys there for me? Well, I picked Rahm to win this event, not a bet, and just sort of outlying the year of majors when it started. I picked Xander to win the Masters, so let's not go by what Feinberg said at Christmas. Um, so I, you know, gun to my head, I think the win for Rom serves him, you know, even if it was like a B minus game serves him incredibly well, there's nothing I'm going to say to your audience about sort of any of the players we're going to discuss. These are all the, you know, super elites in the little group after, but I, I'm, I'm very much Rom would be my pick here. That being said, Joe Much more than the Masters. This would be a big win, I think, in our little ecosystem. There are so many people with Scotty Scheffler, 40-1 to PGA Championship tickets. If you were making future bets, you were probably so much more likely. If Scotty was your guy, you're bullish on Scotty, you are saying Scotty is going to not only get over the hump and win something like Phoenix or API, he's going to win it all. You would have picked the PGA Championship over the Masters. At least like eight out of ten of us probably would have checked that box. Like, what's the most likely place? The Southern Hills. 
He's been vocal. It's his favorite course ever. I don't. It doesn't seem that familiar with the redesign. It seems like every Big Twelve golfer loves this place. So, yeah, the forty to ones that that were there. Um, you know, that would be a a quite a quite a scene that I certainly won't be a part of on the interwebs if Scotty um, pulls this off. But out of these two, I'm not going to teach anyone. They don't know about either of them. I, I'm still so beholden to Rom, so I actually would lean Rom. Yeah, he's the better player. I think so too. And the thing is, though, Jeff, like I looked at Scotty, I'm immediately like, there's no way at 11 to one, right? And then I start to look at the course. I'm like, okay accuracy times distance off the tee approach play. I think short game really matters. Who's got a hot putter and everything just comes up Scotty Scheffler. And, but, but part of me is like, is this guy really going to win four out of eight golf tournaments that he puts a peg in the ground? Just seems like a tall, tall ass and golf is so random and things just got to be like five Joe. He's already won four. Oh, he's going for five. Maybe a second major. Like I love Scotty. Right. I, I I drafted him in like that experts league in the second round where at the time it was like it was a decision and, and people even gave me a hard time for it. But I I am not I can't I can't wrap my head around five wins, two majors. So yeah, two guys right under there, Jeff. Does it feel like I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but we're a couple days away from PGA Championship Week. Just doesn't feel like anyone's gonna bet these numbers. So maybe we see a little bit of bump in these guys. 14 to 1 on Rory, 16 to 1 on Colin Morikawa. He just doesn't feel like their name's going to come up a lot. Am I wrong there? Do you see signs out of either one of them that would lead you to believe there's a little bit of value in that number? Yeah, and I'm still hoping for a bit of a more significant reset, Joe. Mm -hmm. The field is, I mean, this isn't the Masters, right? We talk about the Masters, how it's such a finite, you know, pocket in terms of guys that can actually win. This doesn't um, feel like that to a certain extent. Well, I still, you know, I film on last year. I still feel like we're in a goddamn Truman show. You know, the fact that 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 happened on on that golf course. But I'm going to assume that that's the outlier, at least from the odds perspective and PGA championship winner. So I'm still hoping for an out um, a bit of a readjust here. There can't be this many guys under 20 to one to win the PGA championship. I was hoping the odds, honestly, maybe I'm the silly one, that we'd see a board that could look more like Sawgrass, where the yeah. field, where they recognize, I mean, the field strength is probably nearly identical. The history of the event has shown an ability for guys to, uh, at least comparatively to the other majors and fields like that, like we've seen guys sort of come from the um, farther end of the odds board and pack, and I don't want to say just, you know, pop for a weekend, but yeah, for lack of a better way of, of, of explaining it. And that doesn't seem to be the case yet. So I am still waiting for that. I don't know. I, I don't really see myself betting Rory. He's got those two second places. I, I am a big Rory fan. It's hard to make like what to know what to make of it. He's getting confidence from it. So that's really all that matters, I guess. And the way he's finishing those events, he's just got confidence and it's King heading into a big event. Morikawa. You could feel threatened by the short game, Joe, but yeah. here's the thing. Last time I've seen, I saw this guy, Chip, and I know it's just what's on TV, I guess, but it was that hole out to match Rory at the Masters. And then at the Zurich, yeah. it seemed like he was outstanding, or at least he pulled off some like 12 out of 10 chips that were like dropping in the cup or right beside the cup. So it definitely seems like... Um, that is kind of coming around. I don't know, like long term st statistically, how that would even show. And you know, to be honest, statistically, even with the the Zurich, I don't even know if there's real stats that you could pull to see how well he chipped that week. But to the naked eye, it certainly seemed like um, that was that has been the case. I'm still probably waiting to go farther back the board to make a bet, though. Yeah, the one guy actually I did see a little bit of bump on is 16 to 1 on DraftKings Sportsbook. Now we're recording this on Friday before the weekend um, as they wrap things up there at the Byron Nelson. But I saw a two point bump here was 14 to 1, now 16 to 1. You mentioned the stats. Like they're just screaming this guy's name and somehow he's popping everywhere and hasn't really been able to trans uh, transfer that into a victory. And and I wonder if, if part of that, what 
what to really make of that. But a 16 to one feels like a decent number on Justin Thomas. It seems to have all parts of his game really clicking right now. I haven't bet it yet. Any consideration out of you there? Of the guys that I consider, now this is like a compliment with a backhanded insult, but all the guys that I consider like the true super elites, not like elite, not like very good, the super, super uh, elites of the game at the current uh, moment, I I just have a hard time trusting him Hmm. out of all of them. That being said... When he, if he is lifting that Wanamaker Sunday, it feels like no other player likes season long resume outside of, outside of Scheffler, you know, but like, will feel like he is trending to this moment more so than JT yeah. because the stats just back it up week after week, the finishes back it up week after week. Um, you know, we're seeing some competition in the marketplace, bet three, six, five, at least as we're recording has put a number out on Justin with their um, bet boost, which those are really attractive. Like, as we talk about these top guys, Joe, th- that's like, it's almost like a 16 to a 24, uh, a 25. It's like a 33% bump. That's, that's, that's wild. Yeah. Like, so if those are your guys, um, or you just want to wait to see who they boost out there. And it's almost like I'm hesitant to bet a guy who I like. Cause I'm like, but there's, like bet three six five can boost this guy, and you can feel feel silly or you're waiting for the reset, but it's not going to get any better than that for Justin Thomas. Um, yeah, I I don't know. Of all the guys, I just I don't know. Maybe it's like the putter. I guess that's like the easy out. But of all the really the super elites, I just sometimes have a hard time trusting. Trusting him the I, I yeah, I trust him the least out of all those guys, to be perfectly honest. That being yeah, those- said, a big weekend in Texas, I think would be huge for him. Like just to even feel those big moments again, like have a pressure nine footer. Like, I don't even care if it's for the Byron Nelson. I don't even care if it's because you're out early and it's to set a score, but just like have a couple really big putts on, on um on the weekend at the Byron Nelson make them. And I'm silly enough to think the smallest thing like that can do wonders for a guy like Justin. Here's a couple of guys I'm interested in hearing your take on. And you mentioned the Byron Nelson, and you're hoping to see some signs of life. The, it's We're in this weird stretch from the Masters where we had Mexico that nobody really wanted to go to. We had the team event. Then we've got – it's just like it hasn't been real attractive to some of these big names. We haven't seen them a lot. So I'm looking to the Byron Nelson to try to grab some stuff from DJ and Xander. So DJ's 20 to one right now. I bet three, six, five Xander. You can get a 29 on over at DraftKings Sportsbook. They, they both perplexed me. DJ started out so good. It's just been ups and downs. Xander was like, I was getting ready to come on here and record with you and trash him and say, he's the only guy in here. That's nobody's playing worse. Minus 30 to one than Xander right now. And then he rattles off like eight birdies in his last 13 holes. Still missed the cut, but at least some signs of life. And he struck his irons really well late. Are you pulling much from this event this week, or is it a total going to be a total reset mode? And do you see anything on either one of these two players that you think may be bettable? That Xander number, I mean, I swear to you, Joe, I think I've seen 40s out there. <laughs> like on books that have done like, the most significant resets at the moment. Maybe they would need to, and Xander made the cut on the number. Oh, did did minus five get in? Yeah. Yeah. Listen, I know you were in a, uh, in a scramble today. So you, you've had a few, I just got out of the pool, but I'm pretty sure he made the cut fives. It does seem like held as we're recording and like a 99%. um, And He did birdie at what is apparently eight of his final uh, 12 or 13 holes, to your point, to do that. Wouldn't be shocked to see him have a nice um, weekend again. Xander, as all his biggest fans know, like he loves to play around and tinker. Like he is a constant tinker, especially before big events. I feel like right before a major last year, he switched the putting um, grip and all that. Or he went to the... uh, Oh... Did like the whole new uh, putting approach. Anyhow, yes. he even joked, he even said he plays practice rounds with Scotty. 
he's like uh before the byron nelson and asking him if he played before the major and scotty didn't play before the masters and xander's like what are you doing here he's like i don't know i just you know it's texas i wanted to play and then scotty kind of threw the same question at xander's like nothing i do works like i've tried everything and apparently they both had a nice laugh about it i could i i'm a xander fan and i bet guys that don't win tournaments um and if xander somehow crosses if he has a nice weekend and there's 35s and i'm expecting there to be there to i'm expecting those to be there uh joe i really am he puts himself right into that range where we're not he, i'm not he, you have to do him on a different show but there's that sweet spot like 30 to 50 to range with guys yeah. who have never won majors where that's a great number to catch first time major winners that i would love for him to fall into um no problem and i, I forget who else you mentioned i apologize uh dj dj's kind of been up and down this whole thing this week yeah, um, really interesting with, with DJ. He obviously played the week out of the Masters for the RBC. Yes, it was a sponsor. I was He had his wedding the week after, mm -hmm. so I kind of wish I knew that because what people were saying is just going to show up and miss the cut. Uh, that's kind of what did happen it's the week before his wedding. He had the sponsor. Yeah. And as DJ does, we know DJ to do. DJ doesn't just like have his wedding. Like DJ parties hard. She's posting thirst trap pictures. Like, they probably are having a great time. Like, that's just the reality of the situation. And I promise you, he's come back and won big tournaments after having a great time before because that's just oh, yeah. what he does. He's a great time that much. I'm certain of it. Um, so it was nice to see him at the Byron, just like revving the engine. And if yeah. you're seeing, like, what you want to see from DJ, I think you're allowed to say, okay, just get the doubles because there have been some sloppiness at the Byron uh, he hasn't been able to, like, ride the momentum. There have been a lot of bogeys. There was even a, a back nine card on Thursday that didn't have a single par on it. And while that's, like, good, it also just shows um, a volatility that maybe you kind of don't want for a major championship where you're not going to be able to get out of trouble nearly as uh, as easily. But if he's a guy you want to back, like part of this game, Joe, is like to find reasons you want to back a guy or don't want to back a guy. Yeah. As Mayo often says so often, most of it is actually finding reasons to not bet a guy to land on four to six, seven that you do want to bet. Like the majority of the process is, is you know, getting rid of the guys you, you don't mm -hmm. want and making up whatever you know, works for you in your head. And if I was a DJ stand, which I am, but if I was ready to pull the trigger, it's easy for me to ignore the sloppiness of this week in just being his first start back. And yeah, just rev that at like just a couple engine revs before we, you know, zoom off. And uh, he wins his PGA championship. He's right in that, which I think is very plausible because all US Opens and PGA championships are in the DJ wheelhouse. Maybe we should already be having it, but the career grand slam light like, comes right into focus for him. So I would love to see that. Like, I'd love to see that. That would be super, super fun. Okay, that's a perfect segue into two guys. These are the two guys that I bet, Jeff, and I want your opinion on both of them. I have these tickets. One on Patrick Cantlay from a couple of weeks ago. I got a 26 to 1, and then I took 23 to 1 yesterday. Speaking of Grand Slams, I made a, tried to make a coy little Twitter joke on, on Twitter about uh, the bases being loaded and Jamie Moyer on the mound, and this is his time. I don't know, man. I think this may set up as well as a PGA Championship and the ability to, to capture that Grand Slam is going to for Jordan Spieth. I think this place is perfect for him. He's gained on approach in seven straight events. We'll likely see that be an eighth this week at the Byron Nelson. The putter's been killing him, and that worries me a little bit. But what's much wor more worrisome to me is when he's ball striking it bad. And he was in the stretch before these previous eight events where he lost in six out of seven. So he's flipped the irons around, which leads me to believe that he'll be able to get to some of these smaller targets on the greens. And I have to believe... He's going to putt better. If you would have told me he lost two and a half strokes putting at the RBC Heritage, I would have told you he missed the cut. Um, he won. So he, he's just got this thing, dude, where 
things go his way and he <laughs> makes makes shit happen. And Cantlay is kind of the opposite. Cantlay is the stoic terror and clutch performer and <laughs> just going to be absolutely technical and surgical out there. In speed, it's going to be cringeworthy for 72 holes, but I have a feeling that they're both going to be around the top come the end of Sunday afternoon. A stance on either one of those guys? Okay, well, I'm going to make a uh, an analogy. For PGA Championships, Joe, mm -hmm. much like U.S. Opens, like I feel like you know, you've got to be long and straight, and if you're not, you're just going to get got. There's kind of one caveat to that, and that is you, you're a magic man. So yeah. that allows – listen, they're at the Byron Nelson. That's like going to McDonald's. Okay, even your David Skins can afford to have lunch. Everybody's got a chance. Everyone can afford to eat. We go somewhere else. It gets a little tighter. I don't know. It's in an eatery, cheesecake factory. Okay, yeah, it's lines are big. It's going to take an hour to get in. A lot of people can afford to eat there. And as you go up, like, to me, like, you just the amount of people that can get into this place uh like majors it's just a very small window like the people going to michelin star restaurants like those are the guys that i'm looking at that being said jordan speed like has this pass where it doesn't look like the other guys and he shouldn't be able to afford to get in but he's got a booth in the back i love it <laughs> no, I, but, and cam smith like you've got to if they have this magic ability like when patrick reed is on you just have to kind of respect that they are they can fight in the fight even though they shouldn't be able to and everything i've looked at and even speaking to you who's you know really gone into it scrambling it's going to be um of utmost importance like it always is in a major championship but it's they're gonna ask everything of these guys and you're gonna have to have those shots jordan's got them all so there's that so i'm not betting it like i'm gonna bet on guys who have never won majors that I'm asking to win one and this Jordan Spieth Grand Slam is going to happen and whatever. You were never going to be there at a Not, major. But I season, love right? Cantley. I love Cantley. Yes, here we outside go. Of, outside of, of Scotty Scheffler, you can make the case that Patrick Cantley is the best golfer on the planet at this moment. I'm here on Cantley. I've bet him at 25 to 1 to win this week. Outside of that blip, you just look at the Cantley body of work in totality. Even if you want to break it down into small samples, there's just one ugly spot. Like players, like right, right around there, he just lost it. That's okay, and and we found it again. You could discredit the team win. It is what it is, but it's a win. Phil went off a Phil won off a senior tour win, yeah. so winning just matters. And if you look at the stats, the long term trends. You've got to you've got to land something, even for the European. Like you can even want to give credit to a European win if you want. In the same way, I'll give credit to John Rahm for for scoring Mexico, even if you don't want. Like it just matters, just matters. So I think it matters. Um, the 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 bank grass I think works for Cantley. Mm -hmm. There's just so many things. So I'm very much here for for Patrick Cantley this week um, to to pay off. What ha like the playoff losses, the second places, like mm -hmm. outside of I don't want to say like he could have had a regular not including the masters, but he could have had a few of these things. And we'd be talking about him much like Scheffler, you know, having three wins not being the major, so that's four, but just having a small handful of wins just in that season alone, this season, off yeah. the, the FedEx Cup. So yeah, can't leave for me. Can't leave for me. To, to kind of hop on your analogy there, and just to press you a little bit, even though I'm on Cantlay, but I just want to hear your response on it. Um, Cantlay goes to Outback Steakhouse. He's the man. He's picking up everybody's tab. He's winning the events. But he shows up on Palm Beach Island to the meat market in a major championship. And something about it, Jeff, he's just been uncomfortable. When the scoring conditions get tough, he just has kind of sucked in majors lately. Is there... Is that just a random occurrence? Is there anything really to that? Or is it just a, a fancy narrative that's going to talk people off of him? It's I'm it's weird. I am just, I'm willing to ride his body of work at the moment and his reliability. And there's been one major 
since he became this this player. And you think like oh, I bet Cantley I should be very hyper specific on knowing what he did at at the um Masters where he sucked again, right? Yeah, I don't I, I it hasn't um all of his major performances have not been good. Let me see here what he did for the Masters. I just had it up. Thirty ninth. Yeah. Okay. I actually thought like he was gonna miss the cut. I feel like he kind of battled there. I could be totally wrong, but I didn't bet him. I probably did bet him. I don't know. I bet him a lot too, Joe. Yeah. I know you can't even take what I gotta say, but and now that I'm know, looking at I it, look probably at the, saying that this sucks and majors players, isn't right. Like John Rom is my favorite like guy. If I'm picking like a super guy under fifteen to one to win this thing. In that next okay. tier of players that's going to be between 20, 28 to 1, Patrick Cantley is my pick. He's my pick. Does Cam Smith belong in this range at 22 to 1? He keeps showing that he does. But my problem is, like, as great as he is, I would bet Patrick Cantley to win this event. I'd probably even bet Speed to win this event ahead of Cam Smith. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. What about Victor? Does the does the everyone had this thing where no one was going to take him at the Masters because the short game was so bad, and I was kind of against that, and I was wrong. The short game is really what killed him um, at the Masters, and has it has been his sort of bugaboo. And a lot of these majors that uh, are the greens and regulation percentage goes down. I think that the widening of the fairways that they did here actually doesn't play into Victor's hands because I think that his biggest asset is he crushes it and he hits it straight. So anytime you narrow the course and driving becomes more and more of a favorable asset to have, I think that increases his chances. He's at a decent number here. Obviously, you got the Oklahoma narratives. I think everyone sort of penciled him in to compete here early in the year. Any thoughts on Vic? I love Vic. I'm as big of a stand for him as just about anybody. Uh, I mentioned that JT bet boost. They've got him at 33 to one over at bet three, six, five right now, Joe have been, like, it's not, I still don't run to make that bet. Like there's just a lot to think about, but yeah. I guess at over 30 to one, he fits perfectly in that like first time major winner between 30 and 50 to one, like there's been so many of them that consistently seemingly um, hit for us that he is almost the perfect player in, in that range. I I don't know. I'm not, but that, what, what am I trying to say right now? I feel like he's kind of not played a ton of golf lately either. Uh, we had the team event and now he kind of feels like a bit of a, forgotten entity to a certain extent um certainly not forgotten by the people who are watching this but that like super victor fanfare out of christmas for yeah. this event doesn't feel like it is there right now and i am really interested to see what the books um do with him on the total reset because yep. i think he's probably in the end gonna end up pushing 30 to 1 for this event uh, like in that 28 range, probably once the books normalize. Last guy. Yes or no. It can be a quick take on him. 33 to one. What do we do with Brooks Kepka? No, I know. No, for me but, too. You know, it's like, no, because Spieth has been number one in Tita green. Spieth has a win. Spieth. Speeth is like, no, just not putting well. Like, oh my God. Like it's just a matter of time before Spieth puts lights out. And then, everybody's getting laughed at you know i just don't i i know it's just not there with brooks we got one win in three years at a place he loves in phoenix obviously these are his bread and butter i am it's just no but you'll feel really silly when you try to get cocky and call a bet like if you bet a xander or you bet a willie z or you end up betting sam burns like and then Brooks Kepka cashes at the same price. You're like, you're going to feel silly. You're going to feel silly. You got to be prepared for that. Love talking favorites with you. Thank you so much, Jeff Feinberg, for coming on once again to the Major Report. Check him out all week. You're, you're, you're going to watch the show with Pat. Mayo, 
Mayo Media Net, um, Pat Mayo Experience. You're going to see the the betting show that they do every week. Is Tim going to be on this week or what? Uh, we'll probably get uh, his picks. I'm not. I'm honestly not sure. But me and you, we'll be breaking down props yeah. together for Odds Checker um, later in the week as well. So I look forward to doing that. And we'll sort of – that's usually where I'll be dropping my final thoughts uh, on the event. So these are like my first thoughts. Yes. And Joe, I'm going to share my final thoughts with you as well we'll be back again that'll drop wednesday morning this is coming out nice and early hopefully uh sunday night we're gonna get this all published up thanks for joining me pal talk to you soon all the the best